What's going on guys? Um, in this video I'm going to overclock and underclock a Vectrex. Um, <clears throat> so, I already took it apart. Now, if you guys watched my channel, you may have known that I put this Vectrex inside an arcade cabinet and figured out how to make, make it display on a larger screen. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, I already done a few things to this Vectrex, like this is actually wires that go to an external speaker. So I'm going to have to set a speaker to the side here. But what I'm going to do on this video is <clears throat> I am going to overclock it with a with, with this processor that just came in the mail today. It is a uh, Motorola 68B09 processor. Now, if you don't already know, the original processor in a Vectrex is clocked at 6 megahertz. Well, this processor can handle 8 megahertz, and from what I believe, it's pin for pin compatible. So, first things first, I'm going to desolder the original processor. We're going to put a socket in. I'm going to put this guy in, and let's see if this thing runs with this processor stock. It should run exactly the same if I just, just drop a processor in. And if it does, then I'm going to go and we're going to, we're going to overclock it. Now, uh, one interesting thing, one, th one thing you might, might want to know is overclocking things isn't always easy, unless you have a vector. Um, if you overclock, let's say, a Pac-Man, there's a lot more to it than just swapping the crystal, okay? But since it's a vector machine, um, you, you, can, you can change the clock speeds without losing things like sync and so, and so on. So let's see. Let's see what the bare minimum. What's the most we can get out of this sucker? Let me uh, desolder this processor. Okay, guys. I have the uh, the machine laying on its laying on its face, and you can kind of see um, that there's actually an open up area right here. Now uh, I had to do some previous repairs to this Vectrex, and I was lazy. So instead of actually removing the board, I actually cut some plastic here and here and opened this area up. You know. Um, but oh, you know what? Let me take this time to thank Alan McClellan and to thank Bobby Jackson for sending me all this. I, and, uh, okay, um, Alan McC McClellan sent me the scene, uh, Sean, uh, oh, gosh, what's the guy's name? Sean, Sean something multi-cart. Sean Kelly? Sean something like that. Anyways, he sent me this. He sent me this multi cart, which I was too cheap to buy. I really don't have much money. <laughs> he sent me this multi cart. He sent me a whole bunch of overlays. He sent me some, some, some. He sent me a, you know, like a care package of random cool stuff, and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much, Alan. Uh, also, uh, uh, Bobby Jackson sent me a whole bunch of tools. Um, I really should uh, thank you guys when you send me stuff. I don't always do it. Well, I, I should at least thank you on video. Thank you. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so right about here is the processor. Oh, it's so dark. You know what? I'm not even going to do this on camera. I'm just going to remove this and put a new socket okay, in. Okay, guys. Um, <laughs> I accidentally desoldered the VIA chip, uh, so I ended up having to solder that back in. This is the chip I should have desoldered, and I did. I desoldered it. I put in my um, 68B09 processor. And it, it it must it, either it's not pin compatible with the 65A or 68A09, or this is a bad one, one or the other. Uh, I thought I looked up the the, the schematics in there, the same pin out, but uh, something's different. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what we can get off the original processor. Uh, right here's the original processor. I I put some uh, machine pin sockets on the on the bottom. So I'm going to turn it on. Then I'm going to try to get the first, or first I'm going to turn it on stock, just so you guys kind of see what it looks like when it first boots up. Also, I have this temporary speaker hooked up because, like I said before, I had this in an arcade cabinet and I was using the uh, speaker out. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to turn this sucker on <clears throat> and let's see what it looks like stock. This is a stock Vectrex. One of the two, there we go. Okay, so now you have an idea of what it's supposed to sound like. So this is the fastest pro fastest clock I can get it to run at, 9.6 megahertz. That is still 
somewhat reliable. Sometimes you turn it on, it doesn't work. Sometimes you turn it on, it does work. But okay, let's try it out. There it goes. Now you see how the picture is way smaller? I have a theory on that. I believe that it's drawing the monitor much faster, which it is, and it's drawing it so fast it doesn't have time to, to um, it'll, it'll change direction so quickly, it doesn't have time to actually draw all the way across the screen. I actually had a very similar thing like this happen with uh, Gravatar just recently. But okay, now I'm going to show you how slow I got to go. See how big it's being drawn? Huge, really slow right now. That's slow. <laughs> I'm still waiting. I wanna play. That's crazy. I'm still still waiting. I just want to play. Very cool. I wish I had a sm uh, an even smaller um, oscillator. My oscillator isn't. <clears throat> I have a. This is 2.4 megahertz. I bet you I could clock it even slower. But I don't have anything that. I don't have anything smaller. Now nah, we're playing. <laughs> Okay, let me show you something. I, um, you know, I was swapping all these crystals and whatever, and, and you know, and I just thought, uh, I thought uh, it would be kind of cool to maybe make it a permanent feature to, to switch all this stuff. So, some of you purists might not like what I just did, but uh, put a bunch of switches. See these switches on the side? Now, if, if I leave this and this switch in the middle, if I leave these in the middle, turn it on, and I'm running the slowest clock possible that I have, slowest crystal I have, okay? If I shut it off, and I move this switch down, now I'm running the stock frequency, okay? Doesn't listen for it. Okay. Now, if I move this switch all the way up, now I'm running slightly faster, okay? Now, if I move this crystal, this switch here, I'm running a slight, oh, sorry, I gotta put this in the middle. I'm running a little bit slower than, than stock. I'm waiting for the sound. Okay. Now, if I move this switch all the way down to the bottom, I'll be the fastest I can go without, I, I, I clock it down a little bit. I wanted to run it as fast as possible, but but have no no errors ever. You know what I mean? Because I, I was, the clock I showed you earlier was really really it's really close to this frequency, but every once in a while it would skip some letters when it drew stuff. But okay, so I have that switch down, and this is this. Okay. Oh, and here's here's the really cool thing. I'm gonna turn it on, and this switch here is pause. How you like that? Uh, so, one of the reasons I did this, one of the reasons I did this, is because um, I'm going to be putting them putting this back in my machine, and my machine has a faster uh, monitor than the original Vectrex. It scans faster, so I'm kind of curious. Uh, and some of some of the some of the vectors are drawn a little funny. By the way, see how these? Let me zoom in. This is the fastest we can go. You see how there's kind of like gaps, gaps between some of the some of the vectors. That's because uh, this this machine is actually giving it a frequency faster than this actual deflection board can properly put out. Okay, so uh, it's uh, I'm I'm hooking this up to a faster monitor, 
uh, um, in, uh, in the arcade cabinet, so I think this might actually be incorrect on this screen, but correct on the other screen. So, I don't know, I'm just, just experimenting. I'm just playing around. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool, huh? That's pause. That's the uh, lowest frequency. You have to turn it off and back on to reach the other frequencies. Pretty cool. So, let's try this sucker in my big 23-inch um, monitor. Before I go upstairs and hook this up to the arcade machine, I wanted to show you guys something in case you want to do this yourself at home. Um, you see this right here? This is a single pole and there's a double pole. Now I'm using single pole switches in here to just, just change the frequency. If you really, really wanted to go, to go go that far down the rabbit hole, you could actually use a double pole. These are isolated from each other. So one, one side can control the frequency and the other side can go to a resistor that would change the screen size. Um, you know what I mean? In other words, there's two resistors that, that go to the X and Y output. You could remove those resistors and put uh, your own group of resistors so whenever you flip the switch, it will stay perfectly, it'll, it, so you can make it so it'll perfectly stay the correct size at all times, no, no matter what frequency you, you drive it. But uh, I really don't don't care. I mean, I, if, I'm, I'm going to probably leave it original all the time anyways. But I'm actually really amazed at how robust this machine is. I expected it to crap out, and uh, it's like dishing, it's like taking everything I can hand it. Pretty cool. And I'm back in the uh, arcade here. You got the Vectrex hooked up to the 23-inch monitor. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that's that. At any time I could, during gameplay, I could actually switch it to a different frequency or whatever. Um, let me take this time to tell you guys this may be my last video for a while because, um, as of September 20th, YouTube is now getting rid of the YouTube video editor. So, until I figure out how to get a, um... I, 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 I gotta get a video, you know, editor of some type. Probably gonna try some free stuff or whatever. Uh, or I do have a buddy that might be giving me some stuff here soon. Help me figure it out. But, uh, yeah. So, that's that. Hey, uh, what do you guys think? Should I go with... Um... I'm learning words. This is called acetate. Let me grab it real quick. See, right now I have a blue film over that monitor. Do you guys think blue would look good? Or, jeez, I can't grab this paper. Ah, do you guys think blue would look good, or do you guys think uh, red would look good? What do you think? I don't know. Anyways, hey, can you please, please subscribe? Because, I, I you know, um, I watch my, my subscribers on YouTube. I watch it every, every couple hours. I check it again. Uh, I really enjoy seeing more subscribers, and I love the comments. Uh, have a good one.